and welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to look through the idea of translating a shape. Translation uh, comes under the topic of transformation. So it is in the branch of mathematics that involves enlargement, rotation, translation, and reflection. So we're going to look at translating shapes. This is the basics of translating a shape. And in essence, this is everything you need to know to be able to answer a translating shapes question. What we have here is a vector. So we have one number written on top of another number in a big set of brackets. This is not a coordinate because the numbers are not wrote next to each other and they're not separated by a comma. So a vector is different to a coordinate. Big brackets around the outside, one number on top of the other. The top number tells us information about the movement of a shape in the horizontal direction. Does it go to the right or does it go to the left? If this number is positive, we move to the right. If this number is negative, we move to the left. So this positive two counts for a right move by two spaces. So we are going to move two to the right. The bottom number tells us about vertical movement. If the number is positive, we go up. If the number is negative, we go down. Because this is a negative four, we are going to move four spaces down. So what this vector tells me, the vector of two minus four in words, that means take the shape or take any point on the shape and move it two to the right and four down. Because it's a negative four, we're dealing with down. Let's have a look at this vector. So we have the vector minus three, five. The top number tells us about horizontal movement, right or left. Because it's a negative three, we're going to move three spaces to the left, three spaces back. The bottom number tells us to move up or down. Because I'm dealing with a positive five, I'm going to move five spaces up. So if I wanted to present this vector in words, it would look like this. Three to the left, and I'm going left because of this negative sign, and then five down. And that would be referring to the shape as a whole, and also an individual point on the shape. Okay, let's have a little practice at matching up vectors to movements. So you can see on the screen there is eight movements from A to B, and I'd like you to match them up with the correct vector. I'll repeat that. I want you to match the movement of A to B. So your starting place is letter A, the fruit on the coordinate A, and we're moving towards fruit B. Okay, could you pause the video at this point and could you match up the vectors to the graph and the movement of each fruit? Okay, welcome back. I'll we'll talk through a few of these answers. So we've got a negative three here, which we know from the previous slide means I'm going to move three to the left. And then I've got a plus one, which is telling me I'm going to move one up. So I'm looking for an A fruit that moves three to the left and one up. So let's have a look at this one here. If I start on the coordinate A, which starts at four, four, I'm gonna go one, two, three to the left and one up, and I land on fruit B. So this vector describes this movement. Let's have a look at another one. Let's look at minus five, minus two. The top number talks about horizontal movement. So I'm gonna go minus five to the left, minus five back, and then I'm going to go minus two 
down. So I'm going to go two movements down. So if I look at this graph, I start at A. One, two, three, four, five in the left direction, moving backward across the axis. And two down lands me on B. I'll just talk through one more here. We're looking for plus two and minus two. So I'm looking for a movement of two to the right and then two down. So I'm just going to match it up to this graph here. Start on A, move along two spaces, two to the right because I was dealing with a positive two, and then two down because I'm dealing with a negative two on the bottom of my vector. So this would match with this. If I show you all the matches, this should look something like that. So I've just color coordinated them so you know which vector describes which movement. So now we know how to translate a point. We're just going to put that together to show how we would mathematically translate some shapes when given on a set of axes. A very typical exam question. So I'm going to talk us through question one and two, showing you how we would use each individual point on the shape in order to fully translate the shape. So first of all, the, the shape that we start with, we could often refer to it as the object. So we can often call it the object, the shape that you start with. I'm asked to translate the shape by vector 9, 10. So I know I'm going 9 to the right, and I know I'm going 10 up. Both numbers are positive, so I'm going to go 9 to the right and 10 up. So that means I'm going to look at each individual corner each individual point on this shape and translate all points 9 to the right and 10 up. So if I take this point here, I'm going to go 9 to the right and 10 up and the point is going to land here. If I take another point on the shape, 9 to the right, 10 up and the point is going to land here. I'm going to continue with the other two points, 9 to the right, 10 up, 9 to the right, and 10 up. Once I've translated each individual point, I then take my ruler, draw in the new shape. It should be exactly the same size. It should be congruent. It should be exactly the same size to the shape we started with. We're not enlarging, so it should be the same size shape. Just going to go ahead and draw that in there. There we go. The shape that we finished with we can often refer to as the image so sometimes you may think that image is only associated with reflection but we can use that word for the shape produced after a translation as well so i took my object i translated it to create my image if we have a look at this sentence here translate the shape by the vector 9 10 if i was given these two shapes and I was asked to describe how I got from the object to the image, then this is what I would be expected to produce. This sentence, translate the shape by the vector 9, 10. So I'm saying the keyword of translate or translation. I'm saying the keyword of vector and I'm giving the correct vector. So sometimes in exams, you might be given the graph with the object and the image, and then you might be asked to explain the transformation or explain the translation. And then it's this sentence here that becomes vitally important. So just to talk through number two, I'm going to do it a little bit quicker. We're going to translate by the vector minus five, minus seven. So here's my object. I know I'm going to go five to the left because of this negative sign, and I know I'm going to go seven down because of this negative sign. I'm going to take each point on the shape individually and move it five to the left and seven down. So I'm just taking every point on the shape and translating it individually. Every individual point. So you can see the shape sort of forming itself now. You can probably predict where the final few points are going to go. 
but just for completion, I'm going to do every point. Five to the left, seven down. Okay, so now you can see where I'm going to draw my image in. Here, up here, here. So I'm creating the congruent shape, exactly the same shape after it has been translated. Every individual point has been moved five to the left and seven down. I'm just going to go ahead and draw in my shape. There we go. And as I mentioned in question one, we can now refer to this as an image. If I was asked to describe this translation, then this is what I would be saying. It is, there's been a translation by the vector minus five minus seven. Okay, I'm going to work through another six questions just uh, as examples to show you how you should be approaching each question. If you already fully understand how to translate shapes from my first two examples, then feel free just to jump ahead in the video and have a go at some tasks yourself. I'm just going to talk through all six questions here, showing you how you would translate each individual point. Question one, because of the vector, we are going to go five to the right and seven up. So five to the right and seven up for all three points on the triangle. That's going to create my new shape, my image, which I then draw in with my ruler. For question two, I'm dealing with the vector six minus four. So six to the right and four down. Again, I've got three points to deal with, six to the right, and four down for each point on this triangle. Then I take my ruler, draw in my translated shape. It is still exactly the same size. It is still congruent. Here is my image. Question three, I'm translating minus eight, five. So minus eight to the left, minus eight back, and then five up. Take each individual point, eight and five. Eight to the left, five up. Eight to the left and five up. Draw in my new shape, there is my image. I'm going to go through question four, five and six. Again, if you've now got a full grasp of how translation works, just jump ahead in the video and have a go at the tasks yourself. For question four, we are going to move each point on the rectangle six to the left because of this negative and nine down because of this negative. Six and nine, six to the left and nine down, six to the left, nine down, six to the left, nine down. And there is my image once I draw it in. Question five, we're going to translate this shape by the vector zero, three. So we're moving zero to the left or right. So there's going to be no horizontal movement and three movements up, three squares up. So each individual point simply moves three up with my ruler, drawing my new shape, my image. And finally, question six, we are moving four to the right and zero up or down. So there's no vertical movement this time. So each individual point moves four to the right. Then I draw in my image. Excellent. So there's my six examples. Hopefully now you can have a go at some questions yourself. So now it's your turn to have a go at a few questions. I've put four questions on the screen. For each question, I'd like you to draw out an axis with the X axis going from zero to eight and the Y axis going from zero to seven. Each question contains a shape and I'd like you to translate that shape by the vector in the question. Okay, could you pause the video at this point and could you copy and complete all four translations? Okay, welcome back. Let's have a look at what your translations should have looked like. So this is what your completed translation should have looked like. If I look at question one, I'm dealing with 
uh, movement in the horizontal direction, three to the right, and then I'm going to go two up in the vertical direction. So if I was to take the top of the triangle, one, two, three to the right, and two up, I land on my new shape. From this point here on the triangle, three to the right, two up, and then that's how I would go ahead and translate by the vector three, two. If I have a little look at question three, this time I'm dealing with a negative three. So my movement is going to be three to the left or three back and then minus four, which means I'm going to move four down. If I was to choose this point on the triangle, one, two, three back, one, two, three, four down to land there. If I was to choose this point, one, two, three back, one, two, three, four, to land there. And I'll just finish this question off. From here, three back, four down. So every point on the triangle has been translated by the vector minus three, minus four. And then you would go ahead and draw in your translated shape. If we look at question four, just before we move on, I'm translating by the vector one to the right and then minus three down. So I'm going to go from this point here, one to the right, three down, there we go. If I was to choose this point, one to the right, and three down, I land there. And again, I'll finish this one off. From here, one to the right, three down, that's where my new shape would finish. That's where my translated shape would finish. Very well done if you completed all four translations. Okay, let's have a look at four more questions. So for question five, six, seven, and eight, I still want you to draw out your axes from zero to eight on the X axis and zero to seven on the Y axis. But this time for each question, there is an extra step. You need to actually plot the shape using the coordinates given in the question. So just a little recap, a little bit revision on plotting coordinates. And then the shape that you, you do plot using those coordinates, you then translate by the vector in the question. So four more questions to do. Again, I'd like you to pause the video, copy and complete all four translations. And then when you unpause the video, I'll talk through a few of my solutions. Okay, welcome back. So you can see in question five, I have went ahead and used the three coordinates given in the question to plot my original image, my original triangle. Then I've translated each point three to the right and one up as instructed in the question here to end up with my translated shape. I've plotted my rectangle and translating by a vector zero, four which means I'm moving zero to the right or left, but I'm still moving four up. Plotted my square and I'm moving five in the left direction and two up. Do that for all four points on the square and you would end up with the translated shape. So again, just make sure your original shape starts in the correct place so your use of coordinates is accurate as well. This time we take a point on the original trapezium after plotting it, two to the right and two up, as instructed by this vector. If we do that for all four points, we'll end up with the translated shape. Very well done if you were able to answer those questions correct. And if you're able to start with an original shape, follow an instruction given in vector form to translate your shape, and that is brilliant. You've shown a very good understanding of translating shapes.